There may now be as many as 30,000 men like Acker in Northern Ireland, men prepared to bear arms and fight for the Protestant cause, not just march in demonstrations. Most are working class Protestants, because it's their areas which have come under most attack. This vigilante army is divided into factions, many of them overlapping. Some are legal, some are outlawed under the anti-terrorist laws. The largest and the only legal Protestant paramilitary group is the Ulster Defence Association. It claims to have 13,000 active members, about half of them armed, though the security forces put their number at nearer 4,000 men. Then there are the Ulster Freedom Fighters, an illegal group widely thought to be the terrorist wing of the Ulster Defence Association. There may be as few as 30 men in the group. The Ulster Volunteer Force is also illegal and attracts mainly ex-soldiers. It's organised on military lines and at its peak it had about 1,500 members. Finally, there are the Red Hand Commandos, also outlawed, who see their job largely as assassinating members of Republican terrorist groups. Their number is unknown. In addition to these hardline groups, there's the so-called Third Force. Until tonight, no one will know how many men it can muster, nor how many have guns, though it's known that Ian Paisley has the support of about 10,000 former auxiliary policemen, the men who used to be called B Specials. Many of these men are known to be legally armed. In fact, there's one legally held gun for every 14 people in Northern Ireland, and there are thousands of illegally held guns, many of them homemade. So the Protestant army could fight. All it would need would be the right issue for it to unite and mobilize. And armed Protestants are nothing new. They see their struggle going back nearly four centuries to the year 1610. Until then, the English colonization of Ireland had been only half-hearted. But in that year, King James I decided to dispossess his most troublesome earls in the north by installing tens of thousands of Protestant Scots and English settlers. It was called the Plantation, and it meant kicking out the Catholic natives in favour of the Protestant newcomers. In theory, the Catholic Irish were to be moved to infertile land, but in practice, many stayed on as a subjugated people. The divided community had been established and atrocities on both sides began. So in 1912, when Britain had plans to allow home rule for Ireland, the Protestants in the north were terrified that they would count for nothing in a mainly Catholic state. Their answer was a call to arms under the leadership of a Dublin Protestant barrister called Sir Edward Carson. He mustered 100,000 men, at least a quarter of them armed. The British government didn't want to risk a fight after all, many of the Protestants in Carson's army had defected from the British army and there were fears of mutiny by British soldiers. Ulster was allowed to remain part of the United Kingdom without a But Ian being Paisley caught. doesn't yet command the active support of men like Acker Gillespie. Acker didn't take part in today's demonstrations by the Third Force. His own paramilitary group, the UDA, staged a separate show of strength. And Acker owes his allegiance not to Ian Paisley but to his own commanders, men like John McMichael. I think that pe uh, people like Ian Pierce, they shouldn't march people up and down hills, and when they get them to the top, refuse to fight, and walk away and leave them. People who wave firearm certificates and bandoliers, uh, at the end of the day, will not do the fighting. Who will do the fighting? The people who have done it for the last 13 years. We believe the only way to defeat the professional IRA and the INLA is to seek them out individually and destroy them. It's not a matter of whether the UDA would have to shoot people. What we're saying is any organization in Northern Ireland or any group of people who actively seek out and destroy uh, undoubted members of the IRA or the INLA will have the support of this organization. It's for statements like that that many Catholics want the British government to ban the UDA. But such a ban might provoke more violence. And over the last 10 years, the UDA hasn't been afraid to use its military muscle. They've blocked roads, closed down shops, offices and pubs, acted as an unofficial police force in Protestant areas. The peak of their power was in 1974, when Protestants throughout Ulster rejected the newly formed administration which gave more power to the Catholics. 
And with the help of the UDA, they brought life in the province to a virtual stop. In that strike, it was the UDA who were the enforcers. If you wanted to work, you had to answer to them. And few people dared defy the lines of men armed with anything from pickaxe handles to guns. The army's leaders were ruthless with their own kind. Many UDA men were maimed or murdered by their colleagues because they were judged to be disloyal. These three men were court-martialed by the UDA for setting up their own roadblock without orders. They had to clear up the mess, then undergo punitive physical training. They've come into conflict with British soldiers too, even though they're loyalists, supporters of the Crown. This time it was over what they saw as their right to patrol their own streets as a vigilante police force. We would have gone all the way. Make no mistake what I say, we would have pushed the army back. And apart from the, apart from the UDA members we had in Woodville tonight, we had 20,000 members all over the country ready to roll. The minute they heard that the army had transgressed on us, or we had transgressed on the army, these men would have been into action <coughs> right away. And the whole of Northern Ireland would have erupted. We, we started off with the, the uh, weapons available to us, uh, stones, paddle bombs again. Uh, and there was the odd one or two legally held shotgun that came into play. What do you say to those people who, who claim that it's wrong for citizens to form vigilante armies and take the law into their own hands? Like I would that? say that they were wrong. I would say that they were wrong because, after all, it is my property. It is, it, it is my way of life that is being threatened here. Surely to goodness, I should be allowed to put in my problems worth. There are 850 UDA men in prison in Northern Ireland at the moment, many of them convicted of murdering Catholics in tit-for-tat killings. In all, 600 of the 2,500 murders during the Troubles have been committed by the Protestant paramilitaries. Yet the UDA, the body to which most of the murderers belong, is still not outlawed. The recent wave of IRA killings in Northern Ireland especially the murder of Robert Bradford MP, has made even moderate Protestants seek the protection of groups like the UDA or the Third Force. They feel that if the legitimate security forces can't protect even the highest in the land, what protection have ordinary people got? The divided loyalties of men like Acker show that for the moment the Protestant army is split not over what battle it should fight, but how it should fight that battle. But history shows that it would be foolish to underestimate the threat such an army poses. I want British rule. I was born British. I want to die British. I want my kids to die British. I want their kids to die British. And theirs and theirs and theirs and theirs. Could and you... I would hate to think that my kids would have to leave this country where I was born, where m maybe seven or eight generations before me were born. I look at this. I look on this as my country and my kids' country, and I want my kids to have the sort of heritage that I had, and I would gladly die to achieve that.